So the, the way you actually do authorization on the proxy side is we've created, we've allowed you to do these wrappers. Um, the examples are called entitled name cache, entitled cache service, and entitled invocation service. There was an example of entitled named cache in Coherence previously, I think going back maybe to Coherence 3.4. What we've done is made it a lot easier to, to uh, use these wrappers. And we've also added new places where you could wrap. Previously, you had no way of wrapping an invocation service. So you, you could do authorization for a named cache, but you had no way of doing it for uh, <clears throat> an invocation service. And also, you could not do it for the cache service. So you, you could you could do it on a name cache operation basis, but you couldn't do it on by for a cache service, like allowing somebody to get a cache in the first place. So this is a, just a, a snippet of the configuration to show how simple it is. You just say the cache service and the and the uh, invocation service, and put in the class that you want to use. These classes actually uh, extend. There's a, some, there's a basic information implementation you can extend to use it. And again, I'm showing just a little snippet of this. So I can decide, I can control who gets a cache. It's doing this little check access. So I can decide if this person is allowed to get a cache or is allowed to release a cache. And as you can see, it's, it's simplified also if you look at the, compared to the old example, this is this ensure cache is getting a cache reference and then instantiating an entitled name cache wrapper from that cache reference. So that means the the wrapper that you're returning is entitled name cache, so that every operation on that cache reference can be uh, checked. So again, just a little snippet. Of course, entitled name cache has access to all the different methods, and remember these are running on the proxy side, and you will based on the identity transformer and the identity asserter, you've, you've now produced an identity and that will be in the context. So you can check access, you will know that you'll be running within the context of that subject and you can check access. So for example here, what the code is doing, it passes in a role name, the, a get can be done by a reader, a writer can do a put in my an example code, a put or a get, but you're passing that in and doing a simple check saying, does this subject have this the role? What the role is required to do a get? Does the subject have the role to re do any required operation? And the same thing with the invocation service, which let, lets you do uh, check for if somebody's allowed to do a query. Query, in fact, is the only method that you can do through uh, co through the uh, proxy through coherence extend with an invocation service. So that that's not a security restriction. That's a limitation in in coherence extend. And finally, this is a check access implementation just to show some simple role-based accounting. Of course, this is very simplified and not real world, but it gives you an idea of the, of the kind of thing you can do. Essentially, it's just checking to see that the roles that are, the roles are represented as principles in the subject, and it's just seeing if there's a role that matches the um, role that's required to do the operation. So that covers the main coherence extend features. We've added SSL in 3.6. And SSL is supported both for coherence extend, meaning between clients and proxy, and also within the coherence cluster. Uh, called TCMP is the cluster protocol that co coherence uses. We support basically all of the different variations of SSL, one-way or two-way SSL. By two-way SSL, also called client authentication, it means that not only <clears throat> the, the typical SSL you would see when you say connect to a browser with a browser is that the, you, the, the client, the browser is, is checking that it un knows who, the, who, the, who it's talking to, wh who the web server is. Two-way does both and that means that the server is checking who the client is and sees if it can trust that client. In production implementations where you really want to be sure uh, that it's not just that you're trying to prevent sniffing of data, but you really want to be able to tell that you can trust, then you want to do two-way authentication. There's also a uh, configurable trust manager. By default, that's the peer X509. You can also use the Sun one. You could actually write your own if you understand how to do this. This is regular Java SSL stuff. It's not uh, some peculiarity of coherence. <coughs> um, the, as I said, the peer one is the default. The peer one basically checks that there's a, uh, a certificate available for 
the user, uh, both in the peer and on the on the client side. So TCMP, there's a few changes you have to do if you want to use TCMP uh, for SS with SSL. You have to use well-known addresses because uh, well-known addresses means you don't have to use multicast, and there's no there is no such thing as multicast SS SSL. It has to be a point-to-point -point SSL. This SSL replaces the existing encryption filters that you may have used. There was a, a PK, PKCS encryption filter and a shared encryption filter. The SSL has a lot of advantages over those encryption filters. It should be more performant, and most importantly, it's standard. This is just regular SSL provided either by on the client side by the .NET framework or by the JVM. It has all the capabilities so that it's, you know, it's, you know it's been very thoroughly tested, you know it's been checked for any security weaknesses and all that. The extend support available is java.net. So for in the real world, I would recommend two-way SSL. It, it's, it allows you to have a very solid trust and relationship and also in the encryption of the traffic. Uh, for TCMP, it really doesn't make sense to do one-way SSL. You really want to do two-way SSL. You do need to test your performance. There is always a performance hit with SSL, uh, but you can get around it in two ways. Hardware acceleration, a lot of platforms have standard ways of adding SSL accelerators or maybe even built into your environment. And uh, you can also scale out to, in, in coherence terms, you can add more proxies or add more cluster members to make up for the difference in the little bit of overhead of SSL. So what I show here is the simplest possible usage. This is not a recommended usage necessarily in a production environment, but if you want to, if you want to test this, this is a really simple way to get it up and, and running and, and for, for trying it out. So just create a key store uh, with, the, with the Java key tool. This is a very self-signed cert, obvious password. Just create it. You put it in the current directory. You set you set the password in the WKA using the uh, the command properties, the system pro Java system properties, and you're you're good to go. It'll just it'll just work. Now, all these SS, all the SSL options are available through configuration. There's so you don't you're not certainly not required to use system properties. You can configure a whole bunch of things with with SSL through the the uh, configuration. So you just have to look at the operational config documentation that's new for Coherence 3.6. Similarly, you can do a really simple version of SSL with extend between the client and the, and the proxy. Again, same kind of, you could use the key, same, key, same key store. You just specify the password and you can use the defaults in both the client and proxy config, which is the SSL provider. Again, there's all kinds of options that are available, and you can see them in your documentation. And that's it. For more information, check out these links, and be sure to look at the examples, as I've said before. Thank you.